Hopkins in high school and middle school parents. I'm Carol Cavanaugh, superintendent of the Hopkinton Public Schools, and in a couple of days, school is going to start, and I want to be sure that we are aware of all of the procedures for traffic and for driving around arrival and dismissal at the high school and the middle school. At arrival, I want to make sure that you are aware that for efficient drop-off, everyone must do their part. There are ways that we're going to be driving into the high school and out of the high school as well as the middle school. Let's remember that even though we're operating on campus in a hybrid model, meaning only 50% of the students are coming to school each day, we will have increased numbers of people who are dropping their children off simply because our 77 seat buses are only holding 26 students this year. So we are grateful to parents for being agreeable to drive their children to school. We just want to make sure that that's going to happen effectively and efficiently. First of all, and this is very, very important, please do not arrive to drop your child off at 7 a.m. Our doors will not be opening. Our doors are going to open this year at 7.15. I know this is a huge change in what you're used to. But we're opening the doors at 7.15 because we have nowhere really in the high school or the middle school to house a great number of kids and keep them socially distanced at six feet. So we can open our doors at 7.15 and begin school on time. Again, please do not bring your children to school prior to 7.15. Remember, doors open at 7.15. When your children exit their vehicles, they must be wearing a mask. Uh, we did send out information about masks today. We are not uh, allowing bandanas. We are not allowing gaiters. And we are asking that if your child is wearing a cloth mask, that it is multi-layer. And if your child is wearing a disposable math, that mask, that it's technically a three-ply or better mask. So what's the plan? You have seen me do this presentation before. If you are a person who typically drops off, you kind of know the drill. There are really two ways to drop off at the high school. Either way, you enter in through the main driveway. The question is, where are you going when you leave the high school? Parent drop off plan number one, that's what you will use if when you exit the high school, you will be heading toward Milford. Parent drop-off plan number two, that's what you will use if when you exit the high school, you're heading back downtown toward the CVS. So for parent drop-off plan number one, when you come into the driveway, what you want to do is you want to get into what used to be called the bus loop. So as you enter the driveway, you'll come in, bear right, loop around, and when you come back out again, this is going to allow you to take that right-hand turn toward Milford. You can see that when you get to the end of the driveway, there is no opportunity for a left-hand turn coming out of the Hopkinton High School main driveway. No left turn. We will not be allowing a left-hand turn. So if you come to the end of that road, your only option is to take a right and go toward Milford. That's why this is the plan for people who are heading toward Milford, not for people who are heading back downtown toward CVS. If you are going back downtown toward CVS, you're going to enter into the main driveway and you're going to go into that area that was our typical drop-off area. This is the old parent drop-off area. It has existed since the dawn of time. That's where you're going to go to drop your children off if you're headed back downtown towards CVS after you drop your children off. So very simply, what you'll do, you'll come into the driveway. You'll come up here to the door. You'll let your children out of the car. Loop back around, you'll head out toward the Hopkins Loop Road. And when you get to that exit right there, this is what you will see. Uh, you will get into the left-hand turn lane, and you'll be able to head back down toward the CVS. This should allow most of the cars to get off of Hayden Row Street. That's the goal, is to try to get cars off Hayden Row so that we can keep traffic lanes on Hayden Row Street open and that the traffic is um, pushed off of Hayden Row into our parking lots and people have a good sense of where you can be 
uh, while you're in the parking lot based on where you're going to go when you leave the parking lot. So Hopkinton High School parents, if you're traveling north on Hayden Row Street from the Milford end, now we've talked about what would be happening if you were coming from uh, downtown, you have only one drop-off option. This is sort of the third drop-off option. In the last two, people were coming from this side. In this one, people are coming from the Milford end. So coming from the Milford end, what you're going to do is you're not going to go into that main driveway, but rather you're going to take a left-hand turn into the loop road and come in here to drop your student off. So you'll pass the HCA, you'll turn into the Hopkinton High School parking lot, you will loop around the drop-off area as indicated right here, you'll come right back out and you will be on the loop road and you can exit back out onto Hayden Road the same way you came in. And in that situation you can turn either left or right. Please make sure that your kids have their bags in places that are easily accessible. You know, if we can, you know, have bags ready and kids are just ready to jump out of the car, they've got their masks, they've got their backpacks, anything they're going to need for the day, that will certainly um, expedite the process. And please follow the instructions of the Hopkinton High School and Middle School administrators, the crossing guards, and the Hopkinton Police Department. All of those people will be out there on opening day to help you with this process. Middle school parents, please note that if you are dropping off at the middle school, kids, once again, will not be admitted into the building until 7.15. This is a huge change. We are asking that you don't pull up into the middle school parking lot and wait for it to be 7.15. If you start queuing up at 7 o'clock, in 15 minutes' time, we are going to run out of queuing space in the middle school parking lot, and we're going to have people who are uh, lined up in traffic all the way down to CVS or all the way down Pleasant Street and no one will be able to get through that bottleneck. So please wait till 7.15 to come and drop off your student. When you come into the middle school parking lot, just like you've always done, you're going to come in by the water tower and then you're going to exit and you can go either way as you leave uh, the middle school. You can see on this slide that you'll queue up just as you always have, and you'll stop your car close to this um, door over by the Brown Gym, where your students will be getting out of the car. And again, make sure that they have everything ready, whatever it is that they need for the day, um, backpacks, books, any of those things, just ready to get out of the car uh, in kind of a hurry. Now, at dismissal, this is where I think parents really need to pay attention because things have changed at dismissal. At the high school, we're going to have parents who are going to line up again over by the front door, where they always have. But please, we're asking you also to use the bus loop. Please use that area that we used to call the bus loop. Please put your cars in there because it allows for extra queuing room. Um, parents who are coming to pick up their students at the high school, we have a regular dismissal time of you know the typical 157. So that's the time that uh, our kids are going to be getting out of the high school. 152, I'm sorry. Uh, but if we are looking at the middle school, that is a, an enormous change. Sixth grade students are going to be dismissed early from the middle school. They will be dismissed at 1.30 p.m. So if you are a sixth grade parent, you should be among the first to be queuing up. When you enter into the middle school parking lot, you'll be queuing in this area right over here. Please, if you are a seventh or an eighth grade parent, don't get into that queue because when it's your turn to pull up to the door, your child won't be there and will actually have to ask you to keep going and loop back around again. So we, we really can't have seventh and eighth grade parents there any earlier than your actual pickup time. So grade six, you have a very small window, 130 to 139. I know it's very difficult to plan your day accordingly to get in there within that nine minute uh, window, but please, that's what we need parents to do. Grade seven, your pickup time is from 140 to 148. So seventh grade parents should plan on arriving at 140, get into the queue, and your seventh grader will be able to come on out of the middle school and get into your vehicle um, 
you know, quickly and inefficiently. And then finally, the eighth grade will be dismissed at 1.48. Uh, and that was just in time, I think, for uh, those of you who may have kids at multiple schools. So let's talk about that for a moment. What if um, I have a student who uh, is in multiple, students who are in multiple grades at the middle school. So what would happen if I had a sixth grader and an eighth grader, for example? If you have a sixth grader and an eighth grader, the way that this is going to work is that all of your children will be dismissed at the time of your youngest child in the middle school. So if you have a sixth grader who's getting out of school at 1.30, your eighth grader, who would normally be getting out at 1.48, if that was the only child you have in school, will leave the building along with your sixth grader. So when you come to pick up your sixth grader at 1.30, your sixth grader and your eighth grader will be dismissed. If you have a seventh grader and an eighth grader, your seventh grader would be dismissed at 1.40, and your eighth grader would be as well. We are going by the dismissal time of the youngest child in the family. Now you have the question of what happens if I have students in both buildings, in the high school and the middle school. You'll pick up your middle school student. So imagine you have a sixth grade student that you're picking up at 1.30. Or imagine you have a seventh grade student that you are picking up at 140. You've got a good 20 or 10 or 20 minutes between the pickups at the middle school and the high school. So you are going to need to wait for your high schooler to be released from school at 152. So when that happens, uh, or in that meantime, you're going to have to put your car somewhere. We are going to open up the spaces in front of the middle school. Right now, you know. Visitors will park there, or administrators will park there. We're going to open those spaces up so that once you pick up your middle school child, you can pull into one of those spaces and wait for the high school dismissal. Or you can pull around, and if there is room in the former bus lo loop, you can queue up there. Once that bus loop is full, please do not put your car into the roadway where it's going to cause a bottleneck. Instead, park in that parking lot in front of the middle school. I know this is very complicated, but it's only going to work if people are following the timelines and putting their vehicles in the appropriate places. Because if you do that, then we can still have movement and we have some kind of an efficient dismissal uh, procedure. In the event that this doesn't work, we hope it will, we think it will, well, you know, we will have an opportunity to revise and maybe I'll be before you um, asking you to do something differently. Um, but for now, if you are picking up a middle school student, and then a high school student, pick up your middle school student, proceed to the parking lot right in front of the middle school, and wait for it to be 152 until your high school student will be coming out of the high school. Um, certainly, you can queue up, or your high school student can walk to meet you right in that parking lot. All right, once again, I will say that in order to make this work, we need everyone's help. We need you to please try to follow along with um, the protocols that you see before you, how to get into the high school in the morning and how to get out of the high school in the morning, what time to pick up your middle school student, where to put your car if you have students in both buildings. These are very, very important parameters. And again, if you are a seventh or eighth grade parent who arrives at the middle school before the dismissal um, is entirely finished for the sixth grade, we are going to ask you to move along um, simply because we have to make sure that all of our sixth grade students are out before the seventh grade parents start to queue up. So please, um, I, we hope that you will be able to uh, kind of follow along with these procedures, and we are hoping that everything goes smoothly. Um, I wish everyone a wonderful start to the school year, whether you are elected remote, a green hybrid student, an orange hybrid student, or a student who attends every single day. I think that despite all of the things that are going on in the Hopkinton Public Schools and all of the limitations we're facing, I am hopeful that this can be a wonderful, productive school year. So thank you. Thank you.